Team Blue. Um, I just wanted to say welcome to Natalie Scholar. She's agreed to chat with us about fighting your tax assessments. She has been um, successful two times in fighting her tax assess value. And um, this is kind of a really cool value add that you can insert into your real estate reviews if you are doing them. So she's gonna talk us through what this process kind of looked like and how she was able to be successful. So thank you for being here with us, Natalie. <laughs> okay, so um, first things first, I just wanna say, if you are doing real estate reviews, one of the nice things about sitting down with your clients every year is that you can take a look, a quick look at their tax, tax assessed value from the city and just give it a really quick comparison against the CMA that you've just done for them. If you're not doing real estate reviews, please start doing them or at least look at the videos that we've posted on them because they're a really excellent value add to your clients. But at the end of the day, sometimes when you're doing these reviews, the tax assessed value is way out of whack. Um, with the market value that you are bringing to your client's table. So something to keep in mind is that you can bring that to light for them. Now, Natalie is the resident expert on this at this point, it seems, um, as she has bought it twice for her own property and is going to give us a little bit of insight into how she's done that successfully. So go. <laughs> okay. Um, so one of the first things that's important, whether you're doing your own or whether you're talking to a client, is that the city's assessed value is based July 1st, the year prior. So when you get a tax assessed value in January of 2021, they're actually looking back at the market value on July 1st of 2020 and the physical condition of the property as of the end of December. So there's kind of two different points that they're looking at. Why I mention that is um, certainly in Calgary, we see the market going crazy right now. Um, prices are likely rising, but that is not necessarily the situation that we were in as of July 1st. Good point. Additionally, you could run into a client who purchased the property middle of last year, and then they renovated the basement and they pulled a whole bunch of permits, electrical and plumbing and knocking out structural walls and the physical condition of the property will have changed and the city knows that. And so they could see that the, um, the assessed value is taking into account that there were renovations happening. So it's important to keep those kind of two dates. Right. Yeah. In, in terms of the actual process, uh, the first step is to just file an appeal. Um, there's lots of information on the city's website about that. And when you get your property assessed value through the mail, there's information about how to file an appeal. I think that the appeal period is on until about the third week of March. Yes. Ish. I double check that. And it, I think this year it's from January 14th until March 23rd. Okay. So we're so, in that window now. Right. This is the time that people need to be thinking about this. And so you basically file an appeal and the actual filing an appeal process, I, there's a small fee that if you win, you get the fee back. Um, but basically you just have to give a reason. It doesn't have to be all your evidence. Don't send them like these 10 houses are um, nicer than mine. It's really simple. Um, it can be the house beside mine's the same as mine and I know it's assessed um, lower than mine. Like you need to give them a reason, but it doesn't need to present all of your evidence. Okay. That's the first step. Step one. Step one. File Perfect. an appeal. Go. Okay. On. okay. And then <laughs> what's step two? So um, eventually the city is going to basically tell you uh, um, that they've got your appeal and you're going to appeal, appear before the assessment review appeal board and that there are certain dates where you have to have your submissions in. And they will outline all of those dates and your submissions are in writing. You typically then have to appear in person to present them to the assessment review board. I don't know how they're doing it in COVID. I appeared twice um, when I did this, but I did not fight mine last year. So I don't know what they actually did. Um, the city in, in presenting your evidence, they're looking for two things. They're looking to ensure that similar properties are assessed the same. So if you have two bungalows that are a thousand square feet on the same street built in the same year with the same uh, garage, you would expect them to be assessed similarly. 
So you're going to need to present evidence of um, a disconnect, like similar properties to yours are being assessed lower than yours. And then they're also looking at sales because again, part of this is supposedly on market value. So they're going to look at sales leading up to that valuation date of July 1st. Okay. That's the gist of it. Now the city will go back up to three years of sales history, and then they will do time adjustments based on the market conditions because not enough homes sell exactly on July 1st. So it's very difficult to say, well, look what it was because a thousand homes like it sold on July 1st, that doesn't happen. Um, for the purposes of fighting an assessment, I tried to narrow it down to like the three to six months leading up to the valuation date. Um, if there was enough properties to to arrive at kind of a conclusion about what market value would be. So basically the, city, the spring of that year. like Yeah, the spring of that year. year. I mean, April the city is, will yes. go back and use three years to justify whatever it is that they want. Um, I found though that the actual assessment review board was quite amenable to looking at more recent sales if there were enough to um, demonstrate what the market value was. So when I would send in my submissions, basically I had, I think half a dozen homes like mine that were assessed lower. And I had half a dozen of sales that would demonstrate what was happening in the market leading up to the valuation. Okay. So yeah, when I looked at what you had sent in and thank you for sending me that, that was, that was helpful. A lot. It's like there's, there's almost like two pieces. There's the market value component, which um, obviously we, we have access to that sold sales data, which our clients don't typically have. So right. that's something that we can help our clients um, with in, in getting that sold data. But then it, there was that other piece that it looked like you had um, talked a lot about the assessed values of other properties in your community. Um, and it almost felt like there was two different like supporting cases that you had presented to them that the market value and the assessed values of the other local homes were both out of whack. And that's exactly it. They look at those two pieces, the market value based on sales yeah. and the equity in assessment. Because okay. regardless of the sales, two similar properties should be assessed the same. Right. So the sales history as realtors, um, easy for us to go in and look at sales history. There's actually ways for non-realtors through the city assessment search to look at sales history for a neighborhood. So there is some oh, of that okay. availability, but I certainly put myself out there to my clients um, saying, if you want me to show you what was happening in your neighborhood, much like you said, in terms of the real estate reviews, yeah. Um, I reached out to all of my clients the first week of January when the assessments came out, just kind of putting it out there that I would be uh, available to pull some information for them. Um, right. But yes, it's those two pieces, sales and then equity in assessment. Awesome. And then when you were looking up the assessed values of the other properties, were you just doing that on the city's website? Yes, largely. So okay. if you go to assessmentsearch.calgary.ca, that yeah. is like the portal for assessment value information. If you do a public, uh, you can sign in, you can create an account. If you create an account and log in, you can search assessed values for any property. And when you pull it up, it'll give you information about the property. It won't give you pictures, but it'll tell you the home style, the build year, how much finished space in the basement? Is there a fireplace? Is there a garage? If you don't do the, the secure access, if you just do it as a member of the public and don't want to create an account, all you can do is find out what a house is assessed at, but you don't know how big it is or what it, um, right. the style is. And so if this is something you're serious about doing, it is a good idea to make sure you have an account and to log in and pull that. And so for me, it was largely about... Um, knowing my neighborhood and what houses at least on the outside looked like mine. So I could at least narrow it down because I'm not going to pull assessed values for a thousand houses to see which ones are like mine. Yeah. But just knowing my neighborhood, um, I'm in a fairly homogeneous, like there's a lot of bungalows built approximately the same time as mine. And then I would use that search and I probably searched like 20 or 25 to find the best, you know, right. half a dozen like mine. Also, that would prove my case. I mean, right, if yeah, I found yeah, one yeah. that was like mine and assessed as more, that one's not making it into the mix. <laughs> yeah, we're not, we're not including that. <laughs> they, can fight, they can fight their own assessment because it's clearly out of line. 
Yeah. Um, so it's it's those two pieces. But the city of Calgary does have quite a bit of information available okay. on their website if you have login. that login. Um, I think what I found difficult in the equity side of things is that the city doesn't say what their adjustments are. So when you pull up the information for a property, it'll say it's beside green space or it's on a corner lot or it's across from multifamily. That's a negative adjustment, whereas a across from green space is a positive adjustment. But they don't say what those percentages are. So you kind of like okay. you don't know. You're kind of shooting down a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. It's not a, I mean, it's not an exact science. And just so you know, like right. the assessors for the city, as I found, they're putting things into a computer system and it's spitting a number out. They're not actually right. looking at your property. Right. Okay. So I, I guess um, the biggest takeaways here are that this is a, this is a pretty easy value add that you can kind of do with your clients, especially if you're already doing real estate reviews it's, it'll be easy for you to sit down and say, Hey, this is a bit out of whack. Why don't we look a little bit further into this? I don't know if I would necessarily say we should take this on by <laughs> for your client, yeah. but just bringing awareness to it, even for your client. Cause a lot of people just will look at their tax assessment, file it away and not even think about it. Um, and as an, as a real estate agent, we can just, you know, have a little bit more of a hands-on approach and say, Hey, you might want to look at this. They might not do anything with it. Who knows? Um, but at least you can educate them a little bit and, you know, help them along the way. Definitely. And I haven't taken it on for a client. Like, no, um, yeah, no, no, no. I, I didn't, not, I didn't. like that is not something I, it, you know, it's a fairly time consuming process, but yeah. if they wanted to say, well, geez, I live in Signal Hill. Can you tell me all two stories that sold in yes. this three month period? Sure. No problem. Absolutely. I mean, that is that value add, but I'm yeah. not telling them what their assessed value should be. That, that's, no, that's no, we don't want that liability either. Yeah, well, exactly. That's not really, and frankly, I think in my email to my clients this year, I said, I don't profess to be an assessor. Like, this is not what I do, but I do know something about market value. Totally. Yeah, exactly. Awesome. I think that that was great. I hope, hopefully that, you know, Team Blue will take some value out of that. I think it's really, really interesting. I had a couple over the years that, um, when I was doing the real estate reviews, their, their assessed values definitely seemed out of whack. And if you can kind of bring it to their attention and save them money, then, you know, you're just building trust and doing the right thing for your clients. So. Yeah. And I don't mind, like this was, as you had said, this was fairly short. If anybody from the brokerage wants to talk further, like I, I, I learned a lot, like even I told you I fought it twice. I learned a lot just from doing it the first time to the second time. Um, I won both times, but I definitely think I was better the, the second time. And it is kind of intimidating because you're standing there in front of this board of people, but the board actually doesn't work for the city. So like right. they don't know it's, it's an independent board to see whether right. the city was doing its work properly. And I mean, the city, I can tell you the, the, my favorite comment the second time I did it was the board saying to the city assessor, these comparables were the best you could find for her property. And it was just kind of like one of those moments where the board wasn't taking it from the city. Like they are completely independent. And so that was a little less scary to me once I realized that. Yeah. Yeah. That's a really good thing to know. That helps a lot. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining me today. And if any of you out there, um, you know, want to chat about this, the real estate review part or um, the assessment stuff, just reach out Natalie or myself or any of any of um, the managers here. We're happy to help. Okay. Thank you. Thanks.